Hi guys, I've been getting a lot of requests lately to do a tutorial on input for iOS devices, so I thought I would share my approach today. So this is going to be a two-part tutorial series. Um, in this first part, we'll set up the whole sort of um, system for receiving and relaying of input, um, but we'll just at the end do a very simple test, just something like this. And um, it will only be in the second part that we really fully explore the system that we've set up and look at all the different cool things that we can do with it. Um, first thing I want to do is just go into the build settings and make sure that this is a iOS build, so just switch platform. And uh, I'm going to change my camera color to something more appealing and create a new c -sharp script called Touch input. And this is going to be our sort of main manager class. It's going to track all the input that's occurring on the screen and send messages out to all the colliders that are affected by it, um, informing them of the state of the, uh, of the touch input. So let's just attach this to the main camera and we can open it up. And we can delete the start method. We'll just need the update method for now. And um, what we're going to do is just go through all the touches that are currently occurring. So we can do this easily by saying for each touch. And we can just give it a name touch or T. And uh, now we say in input dot touches. That's just an array of touches, basically. And um, now we want to figure out what this touch is uh, is hitting. So we can do this very easily with a ray cast. Just create a new ray. I'll call it ray and set it to camera. Remember this is attached to the main camera. Camera dot uh, screen point to ray touch dot position. So um, this screen point array is just taking a screen point, this, and transforming it so that the ray goes from the camera's position uh, to the touch position, so we can just easily see what, um, what objects the ray is colliding with on the way. And uh, we also want to create a raycast hit, and I'll just call that hit. And now we can just do standard raycast stuff if physics dot raycast pass in the ray pass in the raycast hit and uh, for performance's sake we will add in a layer mask so this will only be tested against things in the uh, touch input mask so we can just say touch input mask and that's finished. Let's create a public layer mask, which of course will be called touch input mask. And now, if we are hitting an object, we want to get a reference to that object. So we'll just say game object, we can call it recipient, is equal to hit dot uh, transform dot game object. And now we want to send a message to this recipient um, telling it the phase of the touch. So if you have a look, a closer look at this uh, touch class, it's got a touch.phase, and we can see what this phase is by saying touch.phase is equal to touch phase dot, and uh, we've got all these options began, cancelled, ended, moved, and stationary. So if touch phase dot began, then the message that we want to send to the recipient, so we can just say recipient dot send message, and we'll give a name for the method, which we can call uh, maybe on touch down. Um, and we can also pass in an optional bit of information, which is hit dot point. So for, for some buttons, um, well, not really a button, but for example, a joystick, you would definitely need to know which, um, which point on the collider is the user's finger touching. But for most buttons, uh, 
you won't need this bit of information. Um, and we'll just add in to be safe send message options dot don't require receiver, so that if this method doesn't exist in the in the object that we're sending this message to, it won't kick up a fuss. Okay, and we can just um, copy this another three times. If touch phase instead of began, we can say if ended. Then we just say on touch up. And uh, if it's stationary or if uh, touch phase touch dot phase is equal to touch phase dot moved, then we can just say on touch stay. Um, you might want to differentiate between stationary and moved, and if you do, just put them in separate if statements. Um, the final one is if touch phase dot cancelled. So um, this is basically the case that, uh, for example, an iPad can only track five fingers at once. So if you add in a sixth finger, then one of those fingers will be cancelled. Or if you put the iPad to your face or whatever, um, then we want to be able to say on touch exit. Okay, now there's another case that uh, on touch exit might be called. And this is if, um, say, you're holding down a button and you don't release it, but you just sort of slide your finger off it, then um, on touch up obviously won't be called because the touch is still held down. Um, but we want the button to be released. So the best way that I could come up with to, to handle this is to actually keep a list of all the objects that are being, that are being uh, press down and um, at the end of this just compare that list to an old list um, of, of the objects that were being pressed down before and just see what's changed and send messages to those. So we're going to create a private list. So to make a list we actually need to import uh, system.collections.generic so just add that in, and now we can use a list. It's going to be a list of game objects, and we can just call it touch list. And just set it to a new list of game objects, like so. And we also want an array of game objects, so private game object, and two square brackets to indicate the array. And we can just call this um, touches old. Okay, now at the beginning here, um, just to make sure this isn't executing unnecessarily, we can say if input dot touch count is greater than zero, and we can just put this whole thing inside of that if statement. Um, so if the input dot touch count is greater than zero, then we want to basically set touch as old to the game objects in touch list. So we can do this easily by saying touch old dot, well actually not dot length, we can say touch old is equal to a new um, array of game objects with a length of the uh, touch list dot count. Just like that, and now uh, we want to copy all the game objects from this touch list into the touches old, and there's a nice handy method for doing this, and you do it by saying touch list dot copy to and now we give it the array touches old. And now we want to clear the touch list, so just touch list dot clear. And we're going to now add again all the objects that are being pressed into the touch list. So here we can just say, hold on, not in there, in the physics.raycast. Just below recipient, we can just say um, touch list dot add the recipient. So now, at the end of all of this, hold on, I'm at the right place, over here, um, just outside of the for loop, we're going to go through all of the uh, game objects, we can just call them G, in the, um, in the touches old and we're going to see which ones are not contained in the new list, and those are the ones, of course, that are um, no longer being held down. So we can do this by saying if 
not so add an exclamation mark if not touch list uh, dot contains g then g dot send message and we can just send the same message on touch exit and uh, that's basically it for the um, for the touch input class we're now handling all different types of input the only thing that we need to do is um, at the moment this won't work in the unity editor since touch input is of course different to um, mouse input so what we're going to do is create an if statement here if uh, unity underscore editor um, so basically this just means that this code in inside of this um, if statement here let's just add an end if the code inside of here will only be compiled um, in the in the unity editor build when we um, uh, when we build this for iOS this code inside of here won't even be considered um, now there is one problem that I've just realized which is that uh, hit dot point um, well this uh, this hit variable is not going to exist in this scope since it was declared over here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it out of there and um, I'll just put it over here as a private variable okay now let me copy this all again and paste it inside of here now there are a few modifications we need to make first of all instead of if input dot touch count greater than zero we want to know um, has the mouse button been pressed or released or is it currently held down so those are the three states we need to check input dot get mouse button and we're passing zero since that's the left mouse button so that's if it's held down or if uh, if it's just been pressed down so we can just add down to the end of that or finally up if it's just been released and um, we can remove this for loop here since uh, you can only of course click on one thing at a time with the mouse and um, the only other thing that actually needs to change is uh, this touch phase business of course doesn't exist with the mouse so we'll just change this to these thingies so input to get mouse button so that's for held down so we can just replace all of that with that input dot get mouse button down is the same as touch phase dot began so we'll just replace that there and input dot get mouse button up is the same as touch phase ended and there's no such thing as cancelled for a mouse so we can just delete that and now I believe this class should be complete let's save and see if there are any errors yep there are errors the name touch does not exist okay so instead of touch dot position for our raycast we just want to get input dot mouse position okay and anything else nope that was it so let's see um we want to set this touch input mask to a new layer called touch input i guess so let's create that add layer touch input and just choose that from the list and now we've got our input set up but we need to be able to test it so to test it we need a button so let me create a cube and uh I'll put this over here and I'm also going to create a material called button 
and I'll just drag this onto the button. And we also need a script called button, which will apply to the button as well. And might as well shed some light on things. That looks good. Okay, so let's open up the button class. And um, we can delete all that default stuff. And we want void on touch down. And let's just paste this a few times. We want on touch down, on touch up. Uh, on touch stay. Yeah, I guess we need that as well. On touch stay, and finally, on touch exit. If you can hear a ringing sound, that's the uh, the ice cream man. You probably can't hear it though. Um, now. Just to test whether our buttons are being pressed or not, we will just change the color of the button when you press it. So let's create a public color. Um, we can just call this the default color. And another public color, mm, selected color, I guess. Sounds good. And we also get a reference to the material, so private material, which you can just call mat for short. And we need to recreate the start method and just say mat is equal to renderer.material. And now on touch down, we can say mat.color is equal to the selected color. And on touch up, basically the opposite. It's now no longer selected, so set it to the default color. And same thing would occur, of course, for on touch exit as well. Finally, we just need to also set it uh, to the selected color on touch stay, I suppose. Um, just in the case that you are pressing a button down, you drag your finger off and you drag it back on, then you want the button to be pressed down again. So in on touch stay, we'll add that as well. Save and go back to Unity. And of course, just be sure to assign the touch input layer to the cube, which I'm now going to call button. And I'll set its default color to a white and its selected color to maybe a nice shade of blue. And um, let's just play the game and test that this is working. It does seem to be. So for the rest of the video, I'm just going to speed up me um, putting these into a vague finger formation and editing their colors. Um, so in the next part, as I said briefly in the beginning, uh, we'll look at adding some more complex functionality to our button script and uh, getting different types of buttons and text buttons and all that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, for now, I hope you have enjoyed and I'll see you in the next part. Cheers.